Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus in bodily form, like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit is like the wind, Jesus taught us in John 3. The Spirit blows wherever she wills and as with the wind, we have no control. All we can do is see where the Spirit has been. It's strange that Christians often want to control who thinks the right thoughts about God and control what those right thoughts about God are when the primary way the triune God moves and lives in the world is through the Holy Spirit, who cannot be controlled or predicted or stopped. The Holy Spirit moved over the waters at creation and since then has been moving, inspiring, changing lives, changing the world. Today, we see the Holy Spirit come upon the Son of God and the voice of the Father speaking words of praise and love. But this isn't just a time where we see the triune God all together. We also know what this means. Jesus will be spirit-filled as he does his work and ministry. Little wonder that the early church, as we saw today in Acts 8, went right to laying on of hands and praying for the gift of Holy Spirit after they baptized someone. Claimed by God as beloved children in baptism, just like Jesus, the apostles now prayed that just like Jesus, the Holy Spirit would fill those who were newly baptized. But the Spirit goes wherever the Spirit wills. So on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of the triune God poured out on over 120 believers, we have no idea if any of them were baptized. 
But when those who heard them speaking in many languages asked what they should do, Peter invited them to repent and be baptized so that they may have their sins forgiven and so that they may also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Clearly, whether those first 120 were baptized yet or not, they were so moved by Pentecost that they believed the Spirit would continue to come. They expected it. In Acts, after Pentecost, the church watched for signs of the Holy Spirit. They named it when they saw the Spirit's action. And they lived expectant, confident lives, believing that the Spirit would continue to bless the church and individual believers. So this became the pattern. Baptize, then lay on hands and pray for the Spirit. Over the centuries, however, that second part, the laying out of hands and prayer for the Spirit, gradually grew further and further away from the baptism. By the Middle Ages, we see the rite of confirmation as the place for laying out of hands and prayer for the Holy Spirit. You had to wait many years for what used to happen immediately. I did not have hands laid on me at my baptism, nor did I have a prayer prayed for the Holy Spirit. Neither did any of you, if you were baptized before 1978 in a Lutheran church in this country. But since 1978, when Lutherans here restored this ancient practice of Acts, immediately after each baptism, hands are laid on the head of the newly baptized. I will baptize Gus and Howie today. And then after each baptism, I will lay hands on their head, like Peter and John. And I will ask that the Holy Spirit come upon them. But we do not claim that we control the Holy Spirit with this prayer. The Spirit of the living God lives and breathes on the whole creation, wherever the Spirit wills, and on all of God's children. There is no question that these two boys have already had God's Spirit breathing on them and in them. The Spirit blows where she wills, and all we can do is watch and wonder. In fact, in Acts 10, the Spirit pours out on a group of Gentiles while Peter is preaching, before they ever were baptized. Peter and the others had to catch up. So, if many of you are like me, and didn't have that prayer prayed over you at your baptism, we still know that the Spirit has been with us. We too have watched for the signs. We too have named where we have seen the Spirit doing her work. We too have lived expectantly that the Spirit would continue to come into our lives and bless us. But today, what we name out loud is what we all expect and watch for so Gus and Howie can cling to that promise. Today, in our prayer, we claim that the Spirit who moves like the wind has come upon these two as well. And what we pray for, what we name, is astonishing. In the thrill after Pentecost, The early church looked at Isaiah 11, words speaking of the Spirit of God pouring out on God's Messiah, on God's Christ. And they said, well, that's what happened at the Jordan with Jesus. And that's also what happened to us at Pentecost. So the church began to pray that as prayer, Isaiah's promise for Messiah, as we will today. Sustain this one with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. We pray in our baptism that we be made God's Christ, 
God's anointed for the world to be a part of God's healing, just like Jesus. This is what we ask for Gus and Howie today. This is what we desire for ourselves. And we are bold. We dare to name this in prayer because the scriptures have promised this is a gift of God for us. And we have also seen the Spirit doing such things among us and in the world. We have seen deep wisdom and understanding come upon people who are Christ in the world. We have had counsel from the Spirit and have felt the strength of God's power in us. We have received insights through the Spirit and have learned awe in God's presence as well as lived in joy that God is present within us. The Spirit blows wherever she will. But today, we say here too, in this place. Maybe we should have a liturgy where all who desire it could come forward to the altar and kneel and have hands laid on their heads. And that same prayer prayed over them again or maybe for the first time. What would it mean for you to hear these words over your head? To be told, the Holy Spirit is in you. And then to live your life as the early church, watching for signs of the Spirit's movement in your life. Confidently expecting wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of God, joy in God's presence. Well, hear them now washed in God's waters, having received forgiveness and life, God has called you by name. And you are God's beloved child. God is well pleased with you. And now God's Spirit lives and moves and breathes and loves in you. Name that. Watch for it and confidently expect that you will see great wonders. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen.